Hello and welcome to this review of my Apple 2GS keyboard. This keyboard was a donation from a particularly staunch supporter of whom you'll be seeing more stuff soon hopefully. This keyboard fits nicely in my Apple keyboard collection as I have a large portion of their timeline collected. Now I really wouldn't call myself an Apple fan but that said most of these keyboards are actually really good. The 2GS keyboard, model A9M0330, is also known as the ADB keyboard, as it introduced, or rather was introduced with, the ADB port and plug, which is this thing here that vaguely resembles the IBM designed PS2 plug, although I think ADB is older. A lot of subsequent Apple keyboards used ADB protocol as well, so it's pretty early in the timeline, after the 2C and before the M0116. And speaking of which, looking at it, it's kind of in between the two as well. The 2C keyboard originally came with a nearly rimless case, a bit like the one on the 2GS keyboard, and it uses very similar keycaps, but it uses the layout of the M0116, or rather the M0116 used the 2GS's layout. This layout is a bit antiquated, not weird considering this keyboard is from 1990, and some of the younger ones among you may be wondering, well, what the fuck is up with that? But basically, it's a variation of the AT layout used on old IBM keyboards like this Model F, a layout that was quite common on keyboards before the invention of the modern 101 or 104 key layout. This layout is characterized by a big enter key and a small backspace, Control goes where caps lock would otherwise go, and the navigation cluster that normally goes here is missing, but the numpad is still there, with escape somehow strangely in the top left corner. Now the 2GS keyboard changes this a fair bit, including having a slightly bigger backspace and a slightly smaller enter, escape goes in a more familiar position at the top left, and it has what's in a way equivalent to Windows keys, which took IBM forever to do, in fact they never did on any of their mechanicals. I'd say most of the changes so far are for the better, but the 2GS layout deals with the navigation command keys in a rather weird way. See, with the IBM and other keyboards like it at the time, you could use the numpad as a nav cluster if you had num lock switched off. So these keys would act as arrows, and the other keys would issue navigation commands such as home, end, page up, page down, insert and delete. Switch on num lock, and it would output numbers instead, which might sound a bit circuitous, but it's actually pretty easy to get used to and quite functional. The Apple ditched this functionality and instead included four separate arrow buttons in a line nav, and the order in which they put them down makes absolutely no sense. I mean, look at it, at the very least they could have stuck the right arrow key on the right or something, but no, it's actually closer to the left edge. It's 100% useless and makes you wonder, what's the point? I tried playing some old gems like Wolfenstein 3D with it, and it's just terrible. Here's what happened. Yeah, great. It's absolutely terrible, just bleh, fuck it. And I mean, I'm not a stranger to this game either, I played this game loads as a kid. Also, because the numpad doesn't do the num lock thing, hence why there's no num lock key or sub legends on any of the keys, there's no navigation commands like page up, page down, home, end, insert and delete. Well, I know this key here is labelled delete, but it's actually a backspace button with extremely bad spelling. Thankfully, the converter Tom made for me a long time ago has this covered, as this backslash key is actually a part-time function key that allows me to access the home, end, page down, page up and delete functions respectively. Also, it allows me to access the F keys which are not otherwise present on the keyboard, and let me tell you, not being able to press F keys is a lot more annoying than it might appear to be. Now the ADB keyboard actually came in two versions, one made by Alps Electric which came with either Orange or Salmon Alps, just like the later M0116, or this one which is the SMK version which is quite different in a few ways. One of the more obvious differences which you can tell from the pristinely white option 4 and 7 keys is that the SMK version used ABS keycaps which yellow over time while the Alps version, which seems to have been the donor for these three missing keycaps here, used PBT, which remains white upon UV exposure. 
They're very similar to the caps on the Alps version of the earlier Apple IIc, including the strange stepped shape. And these are also PBT, and these have even been styled to make it look like they're also Uniprofile. But upon closer inspection, they're actually not. They're sculpted in a swooping profile like this. Profiles like this are designed to make you type more comfortably, and I think it's definitely an improvement over the flat profile of the 2C. The printing method is also different. The Alps version uses dye sublimation, of course, because it's PBT, but the SMK version uses double shot lettering, and the lettering is actually more of a dark gray than a real black. Now, although PBT is often considered a better keycap material than ABS is, double shot lettering does look better than dye sublimation. I mean, just look at how much sharper the lettering is on the SMK caps. The strong yellowing and the lighter lettering color has taken away some of the higher contrast that's often found in double shot ABS caps though. The build quality is pretty decent, weighing in at 900 grams for a relatively small keyboard isn't too bad, and it feels reasonably dense and taut, but it does flex a fair bit. The construction is a bit weird, there's three screws at the back that hold only this thing at the top in place, and once you take that off, the whole keyboard is immediately exposed because the bottom half of the case is more like a pan than just a back panel, and the unit fits rather snugly in it. So snugly, in fact, that some of the keys can jam on the sides if you don't position the unit in it 100% perfectly. And originally the left shift key had this very badly, which I found very easy to replicate, although thankfully it's an easy fix. So that's a disadvantage of a tight wraparound case like this, but on the other hand, it gives it a significantly smaller footprint than the later M0116, which had wide bezels on all sides basically, and which is consequently a lot bigger, and weighs 165 grams more. Now when I originally got it, apart from the left shift key getting stuck, the right shift key was also broken, but that was because the whole switch was mechanically dead. Luckily, I have a small amount of spares, and I was able to easily swap it with a working one, and now the board is functioning beautifully again. Apart from these two extremely minor things and a fair bit of yellowing, the keyboard is actually in super good condition, and it's pristinely clean, which is always a big plus, especially for a review, because you get to see the switches at their best. And speaking of which, this being the SMK version of the board, it uses SMK second gen switches, but not the more common blue clicky Monterey version that I've shown before, instead it uses the very similar looking white slider tactile version. This is pretty cool because I've been looking forward to reviewing these for a while, but unfortunately for these little buggers they have some exceedingly terrible competition, as the keyboard's predecessor used Amber Alps, which are extremely excellent, and its successor used Orange Alps, which are also extremely excellent. Not a battle any Switch should want to find itself in, really. I already pity the bastards. So anyway, what do they feel like? Well, they're actually kind of in between the two in many ways as it happens. In terms of weighting, the SMKs feel stiffer than Orange Alps, but slightly lighter than Amber Alps. And in terms of tactility, it's stronger, or rather more bulky than Orange Alps, but definitely not as tactile as Amber Alps, which are some of the most tactile switches I know. I'd say they don't feel quite as nice as either personally. The Orange Alps' lightweight and delicate key feel is nicer than the more cumbersome feeling tactility on the SMKs, and the exquisitely strong yet sharp tactility on the Amber Alps is truly something to behold. The SMKs are not as smooth as the Alps switches either. In fact, the tactility is quite different even from that of their Clicky Brothers as well, which feel roughly equally tactile except more sharply so. The tactile SMKs have something a bit rough about them, and if you press the switches down very slowly, they actually feel vaguely rounded, so to speak. Overall, they're certainly not bad switches though, I like them. The weighting is pretty good, and they're definitely nice and tactile, but it's not quite as good as Orange Alps, or even Monterey's for that matter, in my opinion. Despite the not exceptionally stiff weighting, there's just some sense of impediment about them. If you open them up, you can see the origin of the difference in the tactility between the clicky and tactile SMK switches. The tactile version uses a different black leaf spring to generate the tactility, with round-shaped teeth that are mounted at a much sharper angle. 
Also, the click leaf on the Monterey is ever so slightly bent outwards, and I appreciate that it's a little bit hard to see on the camera even under extreme close-up, but the tactile switch doesn't have this, and no, that's not a fluke of this particular switch, that's normal. I don't know exactly how this influences the feel or sound though. Now you might expect that the more sharply angled teeth on the tactile leaf would actually generate a more sharply tactile switch than the clicky ones, but it's not just the leaf spring that's different, the slider is also different, and the edge that the teeth hook into is much more rounded than on the clicky version, and this combination of more angled hooks and more rounded slider edge causes the switch to be tactile but not clicky apparently. In any case, I suspect it's probably the edge of the slider that causes the biggest difference. I think the rounding of that edge causes the rough part of the feel as well. Well, anyway, overall it's a decent keyboard. The switches are certainly not bad, and it's well built, but there's better keyboards out there, and I reckon both the 2C one with its Amber Alps and the M0116 with Orange Alps are better. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.